Equally, equally tough. Equally tough for them. Win this game for H2K, and I believe in the playoff dream for this team. Well, we'll hold you to that. Camille Band alongside the Scion by G2. H2K getting rid of the Rise. Now, we saw on patch 8.4, a lot of changes in the meta, a lot more Banner of Command earlier, Barons. Is anything going to change week to week here, Deficio? Well, we have seen some teams draft a little bit more late game uh, so far. We've seen less uh, get first Baron with Banner and take the entire enemy base. I feel like the Dematerializer has come in to kind of counter some of that. Uh, G2 and H2K banning a four of the traditional very strong OPs and then Tristana, which is a European special. Uh, we are so far the only region who are that scared of it that we sometimes feel like we have to ban it in the first phase. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessary, but each to their own. H2K might feel like Yana can't play anything else, which is a common strategy for pro teams when you're like, why did you ban that 180 carry when there are like 10 other? They're like, aha, listen. We knew that the enemy AD carry could only play this champion. Everything else, nope, complete garbage on it. Okay, I, I, I wanna. I, I, I agree I, I, that it's maybe it's true. Sarcastic. Maybe it's true. Kianan is 5 and 1 on Tristana, uh -huh. and then 4 and 4 on everything else. See? That explains the Tristana ban. They're clearly saying that's the only champion he can really carry on. Let's remove it. Varus is his second most pick, though, and he's Oh, they give Zyra Khan, though. They give Zyra Khan to Sheriff. Last time he played Zaya, he had that sick outplay at the base. I guess, okay, they also give Tom Kench. Yeah, I mean, Tom Kench is also a pick. You were very excited, and then uh, Tom Kench kind of... I was hoping quenches. for Zyra Khan, uh, for Sheriff and Promise Q. I think they actually both play well, but I can understand that maybe there was a support counter pick against the Rakan. They don't want to face with the Varus and don't want to get towered off bot lane five million times. So I can kind of see it, but I normally, in Europe, when I see Zyra Khan available, I want to see it locked in because most teams can't play against it properly. So what else of those big picks that are available here? Whoa, it's going to be Cockmore. Are... Okay, well, I mean, that's is early. This? That is a surprising pick. I was going to say something like a Sejuani maybe, which is much more H2K style, but the Cogmore for Sheriff, they're putting a lot of eggs in that basket. And they are saying G2 Esports either will draft late game and we will outscale them, or G2 Esports can't finish games. Fnatic found success drafting full late game against G2. G2 couldn't finish it. I think this is really risky because G2 can get a strong early game comp, absolutely destroy H2K and, no offense to H2K, but there's a slight, slight difference between how Fnatic can play a late game team fight with Caps and Reckless compared to what I think H2K can do on their side. And also they're not running the same kind of wave clear from the AD carry as we saw from Fnatic with Azivir. So probably looking for wave clear from their mid lane. They have here. to get wave clear there. Selfie's hovering over the Azir for the moment. The Olaf and Braum were locked for G2. It's not going to be a Zoe because we're not on 8.5. She is still pretty dead on this patch, but a Cassiopeia is a possibility. It is. We haven't seen a mid lane choice yet, obviously from, uh, from Perk. So can just grab a more standard safe blind pick uh, in Azir that we see so often. So we got a great, great early game set up with Varus plus the Olaf. You can definitely gank, you know, around bottom side, even against the Tom Kench. Uh, I think there's a lot of options for where Yankus will end up going in this game. And of course, when you draft this way for H2K, it's very much scaling, scaling, scaling. G2 Esports can't finish games, make fun of them, laugh at them, and then just go to late game and let Sheriff carry with Selfie. I mean, as much as G2 Esports can't finish game, you've got Banner of Command, you've got Baron. If you have a 10,000 gold lead at the 25 minute mark, even G2 should be able to finish yes. that one off. And this combo of carries from H2K, it's not the same as Victor Sivir when it just comes to instant killing every single wave possible. So it's not as easy to just stall the game forever. But I still think like getting Rage played on Sherith is a, a, a potential spike for them to play around, but they're going to get matched by the Fires. Rage played on the other side. So I'm still giving it over to G2 when it comes to, of course, the early mid game pressure, especially also because they have Olaf, who is one of my favorite early game junglers. And it's a more aggressive early game jungle, jungler, which is what we wanted to see from Yankos. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Let's see what Perks wants to play mid lane then. Uh, I like the, the Corky Ban, which has been uh, one of the go to answers for him. Rise, of course, banned as many games as possible. On the other side, H2K no longer have the Sejuani or the Kha'Zix to go to. That means all of Shook's champions are banned out apart from the Jarvan, which he could pick. Yeah, and Jarvan against Varus is fine. Yeah. So that's not a bad choice. Skana is also available in this draft. The Jax is also available. Like, the jungle pool is pretty big. 
uh, right now. Uh, so I think Shook is, is fine leaving his uh, jungle pool for a second. And this is something that's surprising to me. That's the fact that Skarner can go all the way down. And not even like G2 can counter pick specifically with like a time can or anything. Like Braum is already locked in. So this Skarner should be able to have a pretty free game. Ooh, NA special. Gets the Syndra here for perks. Does mean you can knock away the Skarner. A little bit of counterplay there. And he flashes on you and you're like, ah. <laughs> That's true. But this is what we talk about, Medic. This is my dream. They can play around mid lane with perks. He can snowball on Syndra. He can try and destroy the enemy mid lane and Yankers can join him and win the 2v2 against Skarner plus Azir. This is what I thought the Yankers perks combo would be all about. Now, we get to watch it on the LCS stage. We're hyped for now. I'm always hyped. I'm always hyped when I get to cast with you. I'm always Every hyped player you have seen is the greatest Olaf, player ever. A Syndra into an Azir and a Skana in that mid lane. But Deficia, there's one, there's one problem for me here. You said G2 can play around the bottom lane, you know, shut down this bottom lane. And mid, then you, mid, mid, then mid, you mid, said mid. they can play around the mid game. So which lane are they actually going to focus? Why not both? How? St How do you focus both? You start mid. That makes sense. Take your advantage. Go elsewhere. Yeah. What about bot? Hey. It's definitely true. The option is there. It's definitely true. You don't really go top lane for Maokai and be like, yeah, 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 yeah Top yeah. lane's an island. So Wonder that. has to accept that he's not the alpha on G2 Esports. It is perks. So if he wants to try and play something where he can snowball his lane with, the, with his jungler, it is, of course, the Syndra mid for him specifically. G2 Esports have a lot of tools to get it, especially in the mid game. But man, if we go full late game here, Time Ken just counters the Syndra ulti. Sheriff is on a late game hyperscaling carry. Is Selfie on the same with the Zia. Like, A3K's late game is far superior. G2 Esports, show us you can close a game. Show us you can play a strong early game as well, because last week they weren't able to do that. They've consistently been good at it, but this is one of the times it's very important for them to get those early and mid game leads. They are still fighting for first spot. We cannot forget that. They've only one win behind Fnatic. If they win this game, they lock their spot in the playoffs. And H2K are nipping at the heels at the bottom of the pack. They need these wins. Let's see what happens level one whenever there's a Braum in the game. People can look. Uh, funny enough, I think G2, I'm watching on my screen while you guys are watching here, invaded in, just checked. After a little banana brush, said, okay, is anything happening here? Are we spotted or not? And then they noticed they got spotted and just back right out, straight back towards the standard lanes. Yankos on Olaf. Early game aggression. We just watched Maxlaw in the last game. Five early kills. Dove the bottle in third multiple times. Didn't work out too well for Misfits, though. I mean, hey, if you don't want to go early, early Baron and that kind of stuff, then yeah, you don't want to win. But that's just what it is. Uh, Yankos, of course, our guest on the podcast, he said that this G2 setup here is probably the healthiest team environment he's had in a while. And the reason that stood out to me is this is a player who's been on a lot of different lineups in the past, you know, H2K, Rocket, where... There's always been some sort of problem that seemed to keep the team from just really improving and reach the maximum potential. Some personalities clashing could be one of the, the problems. I want to see if this G2 lineup can be the one where I feel like Yankos, especially in playoffs, can finally show us how good of a player he can actually be. Well, there's a lot of opportunity for him. A G2 have improved across the course of the split after a disappointing start. I want to have a quick look across some of the runes here because we've got Triple Demon, a Minion Dematerializer on the side of G2. Only a single one sitting on H2K. And if G2 do get that mid-game lead, we'll have to see if Promise Q keeps those Minion Dematerializer stacks. Yeah, they make sure to have one in each lane. Again, further try and get more push for G2 Esports. You want to be aggressive early game. You look at this HK draft and you're like, listen, there's so many scaling things on this side. We can punish that hard. You got to get down early turrets if you want to play around early Baron. And that's going to be the big thing for G2. And I think the dematerializers in that case can make a lot of sense to actually get that uh, push going for them once we get a few levels under their belt and it actually becomes active, which is just in a matter of a few seconds. Meanwhile, on the other side, the one guy we are looking at in terms of champions to make plays is the Skarner. Strong duelist, get level 6 and the first gank typically at least results in a flash. Most of the time a kill. Like Shook can be the one who tries to at least get some gold for H2K. Has gone for the Predator as well, so it will be a very speedy Skarner when he 
scuttles his way through, spotted out on that zombie ward and pinged out by G2. Just trying to get some vision on the Scuttle Crab here. It looks like Jankos is doing a relatively long first clear. He's gone through his entire jungle. Now sitting down at the Krugs. Oh, down towards the bottom side of the map. Relatively healthy. Could look for something, but I think he's just going to back away and start to build up those items. Also want to get them boots so you can get that Predator proc. Otherwise, it's not going to do a lot for you. So very good for Wolf to do a full clear. So actually go back and get multiple fairly cheap items. And again, as I highlighted, the boots important to actually get the Predator as an active. Meanwhile, push and bot lane, we talked about it. Mid lane, Syndra doesn't necessarily just like instant shove in Azir, but her ability in the skirmishes, 1v1, 2v2, she's still so strong at level 6. With the burst, with the fact she brings the stun. Yeah, because he's ganking already. It's top lane though. Uses that predator trying to catch on to Smitty. Slow comes out, but Shook's here as well. The rupture isn't going to connect, but H2K are going to try to turn this one around. Flash away from Smitty. The stun from Shook. It's just a summoner burnt from the H2K top lane. I think Yang is right there. He just he's still waiting for his camps to respawn. He was like, okay, I just need to find some gank because I have boots. There's nothing for me to farm. And top lane was just the open one because Smitty J had, of course, you know, he was kind of caught a little bit in the middle of the lane. So first gank from Yankos considered a success by forcing a flash. And it's good early game as well from G2. Jankos getting some ganks down, allowing for G2 to get a bit more pressure in this early game. As I said earlier, their, their week seven wasn't quite as strong as their, their previous weeks. They're actually behind in gold at 15, behind in towers. Their kills over deaths wasn't that great either. But we want to see them return to these early performances to Fischio. Yeah, and it all started in the draft, which is what we saw here, or what we see here from G2 is more focus on the early game because last week it was all late game. Like, there were Victor comps in there. They were like, we, we're fine falling behind 20, you know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes into the game, as long as we just keep scaling. And that's why we see these poor numbers. And it didn't look that great for them. They had a really rough week. So I want to see early game G2. I want to see them play around the special perks because he's the best performing member, member on the team. And we're seeing it with this draft. So it's an adaptation after week where it almost got perfect game by Splice. And almost lost to Giants, should have lost to Giants. So we've talked a lot about how G2 want to play the early and mid game, how they want to get their advantages. If your H2K is the entire game just getting vision and making sure you don't get caught out until you can get to that late game scaling? I mean, that's always one of the things. You want to try and predict where is G2 going to attack us right now? Is it a bot lane tower dive? Is it, you know, a camping mid with Yankos? Then you need to have some early wards down to actually see this Olaf come running towards you so you can react to Selfie and dash all the way back to your turret and stay alive. And that's kind of the game plan for these scaling comps is just predict where the enemy is attacking you and make sure they don't actually kill you, so you just keep stalling and stalling and stalling, and you keep getting gold from minions to watch yourself. But I think Shook, once he's level six, could surprise G2 and actually pull off a gank. Skarner pulls back a Maokai into a feast from a Chogath. There is some kill pressure, if you have enough time. Especially since Wonder only has a Ruby Crystal and a Dark Seal at the moment. Like He's not very tanky at all. No six yet for Shook. He's going to try and get towards it. Jankos does have a slight level advantage, and he's coming up towards the top lane as well. So although we predicted mid and bot lane action, it seems to be more focused up towards top. But I think this is because, again, he didn't know. Like, he didn't have anything to do before, and then he forced a flash. So now he should just return gang the no flash lane. Teleport's going to come in here, though. They're looking for the fight down towards this top side. Smitty J so low. Forest Q flashes in. Can't quite get there in time. And now he's caught. Between between Yankos and Wonder, Shook on his way, has the Impale, but the Root coming out from Wonder is doing a lot of work from Skew. Perks on his way. Skin. Perks is coming up, and there's no escape for the Tarn. That Catfish gets destroyed. And this is why we want to see Yankos on early game junglers, getting the first spot here. It all starts with him saying, okay, I don't know what to do on the map because there's nothing for me to farm. I'm going to go top and force a flash. Then he knows I can just return to top lane because we have a point on click CC from a Maokai. I have Predator, that's a Chogath, that's a free kill. So, of course, he returns topside and just secures a first blood. And Perks, good roam from him to secure a second kill for G2 Esports. Great start. Doing exactly what they should do with this Olaf pick here. Nice return gank. And that is a free kill on Smitty J. Promise you tries with the flash and TP to save his top laner, but no! Oh. Just too late. And now he's missing bot lane. And he used TP, which is now going to be on cooldown. Everything just went wrong for H2K. It's uh, a comedy of errors for them. 
Losing two kills, Perks getting one. Sets him up for success in that mid lane as well. It's about a thousand gold lead as we come towards the eight minute mark and that Ginsu's is on its way from here on and down towards this bottom lane. And a big wave on his way as well. Promise you, he's returned. The fallen hero from the top lane. Sadly uh, for him, Jan uh, is going to get this big wave. He gets slightly ahead in CS. It doesn't matter too much for Sheriff specifically. Obviously, whoever goes back in Rage Blade versus Rage Blade and get it first, if the other guy doesn't get it on his back, that is a, a big spike in your favor. But we've just seen Jankus focus topside early and not look bot lane at all. Shook does still have its flash, does still have the Predator, has the Impale can perhaps look down towards this bottom lane. No real vision there for G2, apart from in that tri-bush. Selfie's going to be gifted over a blue buff for yeah. extra laning presence. At this point, top lane is lost. G2 will just keep ganking it because Smitty can't get away. You just have to feel sorry for a guy. After a certain point, uh, Smitty J dies once again. And I Wonder is the one to secure. I just like the adaptation from yeah. G2. They're like, all right, yeah, Maokai top. Wait, that's a gank set up. Force early summoner. Okay, chain gank it. Literally lane gank now. He just, you just run at him and you just kill him. Smitty J can't do anything. His flash is ready now for the next gank. But his turret is taking a ton of damage. TP is up in just a few seconds. No one else is defending it. They're looking mid lane from H2K side. Shook's flash ulti is one of the ways, as we mentioned, that they could try and get some gold in this early game. But right now, they're not able to spot Yankos. And it's hurting them. So good from G2, though. First tower blood nine minutes in, a 2,000 gold lead. Jankos can get deep vision down. It's the early aggressive Jankos that we wanted to see again, Deficio. Not where we expected it, but great play from him to realize where the weakness is on the map. Yeah, just adapting to what's happening in the game and punishing H2K. He gets a Raptor Camp. Shook will respond with the least amount of Drake, but I think if you are G2, you rather get three early kills plus a turret. Then a dumb Drake on the bottom side. Perks, meanwhile, mid. Yanks was around, but uh, Selfie's okay. He can slide his way away. Still has the cleanse as well. This is the highest goal difference that G2 have had at the 10 minute mark. We said they needed to play around the early game. They needed to snowball it into a mid game win. Well, they're doing exactly that now. And we just see how Selfie's also playing mid. Like he knows, use my ability to get away from, you know, Yanks if he shows up. So that does make it a little bit safer. I like the early boots from him as well with the MR on his side, and meanwhile bot lane, they're just sitting on the turret with the time Kench, so HK have decided to play defensive in two lanes, and the one lane that was obviously pushing because it's a Cho'Gath thing got punished. Well, the one hope for H2K is Sheriff in this bottom lane as well. Across the last couple of weeks, he's really stepped up, high damage a minute, beating out his enemy AD carry as well. He's looking like a central point for H2K if they want to win. It's all late game, and this game, it's not about Sheriff carrying the team towards the late game, it's just a it's about him just getting enough farm, getting three items and being like, okay, guys, stall, 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 and then I can try to carry late. I think it's going to rely more on D2 messing up the execution than on H2K showing us perfect defense in these games. Because typically in League of Legends, if the enemy team is in fact stronger than you, defending almost becomes impossible. That's just so unfair. This is the reason the dinosaurs went extinct. Smitty J's trying to turn it around, but once again, G2 just collapsed on him. Should not be able to get away from this one, and Wonder secures the kill. <laughs> oh, man, and nothing else is happening on the map right now other than a bit of damage in mid lane from Selfie. At least that's where HK can try and get something. Three members on the way to defend, and... Oh, Smitty J at least is getting farm. Yeah, that's the one thing I was gonna say. That's He's ahead in farm. One CS ahead of his lane opponent. He's basically won the lane, Deficio. But what do you do as a dinosaur if a giant tree dressed up as a cat shows up? I think I would be thrown off by that eventuality. That guy, Wonder's coming towards mid lane again. The oh, Emperor's going to have to you. slide his way away, but he's knocked up. Wonder's going to chase. Twist in advance, but promise you, ease him up. Here's the TP as well. It's UK trying to turn this one back around, but the Rift Herald's going to do a lot of work to that tower. They will be able to take it down before it gets the turret. Pretty smart, though, that G2 do not all in for the turret here. After they realize everyone is showing up from H2K and TP from Smitty J, they just step away. They can kill this town in a minute or two. That's perfectly fine. They're ahead of schedule right now. They got four kills. They got a 3k goal lead. They're not in a rush anymore. They're doing just fine. They will eventually get this mid lane turret. Can then swap it down to the bottom side. Rage play should be here on next back from Yanan. Will be delayed by Sheriff because he went boots. Couldn't actually get anything useful on his back here. And while H2K have 
Walled up the bottom side. They've communicated between mid and bot lane. We're doing fine, guys. Keep stalling. It's a great game. They've not pressed tap. They've also muted their top laner. <laughs> so they have no clue what's actually happening on the other side. It's one of those solo queue games where the guy's just like, I'm getting camped. It's like, fine. It's fine. We're even in the other lane. Yeah, the maybe, other lanes are doing great. Maybe we can win in the other lanes. And Smitty J is like, jungler, 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 jungler. Where is the shock effect I heard about? Well, he's, uh, he's farming. Yeah, 20 CS up. Good there you stuff. go. So, what do you want? Do you want 20 CS advantage for your jungler? Or do or you four want... four kills. A four kills. And a tower. I think you take the CS yeah, on I your agree. jungler. I agree. Shook's going to try and steal away a red buff here. And there's the bottom side of the map that actually does belong to H2K. Yes, but now there's a fit Maokai on his way to stop them from controlling bottom side. No blast cone for them to get out. Wadid's going to face tank Shook. There's the chain of corruption from the side. Promise Q looking to spit out his jungler, the cleanse. Gets the flash, gets the spit, the chase though. Three members of G2 are going to jump across that wall. It's on Sheriff. Selfie puts up a wall of shot soldiers to try and divide the team. But G2 runs straight through it. And they're going to try and chase down Sheriff. Gets to the blast cone, Three uses wars. the flash instead. And will escape for the time being. Yankos tastes a little bit of blood there, but cannot solidify the kill. So Wanda using his advantage to instantly go bottom lane and join the team for a fight. Meanwhile, Perks and Yankos can secure the bot lane turret. All of H2K falls back, except for Smitty J. Excited for him, doesn't have enough time to actually kill a turret. And I feel like uh, the early game from G2 and the draft from G2. I think it was pretty strong. It's been, it's been working pretty well. Uh, I feel like H2K maybe have committed slightly too much to the late game. Now, I will say, of course, if we end up uh, seeing H2K stall the game and win, brilliant strategy. Knew it all along that G2 couldn't finish, but oh man, it is so heavily in G2's favor. We're like 14 and, 14 and a half minutes in, and it's a 5k goal lead. All three turrets are dead. And it's plays like this that make it. As you say, you have to translate that advantage from the top lane into the rest of the map. First time on the bottom side, H2K get greedy. I'm not sure if they actually realized that Wanda could just TP down as mid J could not. Because when they invade in, they open up for that play to happen. Good reaction from G2. H2K gamble for a red buff that wouldn't really do anything for them. So not worth it to take the risk. They get punished. And now they all share some of the blame for falling behind. I have to remember how much this game means for G2 and for H2K as well. G2, the opportunity to lock if they win this game and tie up on wins with Fnatic who play next. H2K, on the other hand, going 5 and 10 is never a good sign. They would have Thank to win you, the rest of their <laughs> games to be able to have any sort of chance. And they've got Splice oh. up, they've got Schalke who looked better today, and they've got Rocket left. Yeah, it's, it's a tough schedule if you're H2K, mainly because of D2 and Splice. And if they lose both those games, they're effectively done. Even though there might be some crazy tiebreaker scenario somewhere, uh, that is not too realistic. Wonder is mid again because he's fed and he wants to kill people. Shook there as well with Dids on the chase. Promise Q with the norm down once again, but he's just stunned up. The Emperor's Divide comes out, but that's not dividing anything at all. G2 get two quick kills under the tower and they're just going to push forward. So all three out of turrets gone. Killing a Zia turret, start hitting the enemy mid tier two at 16 minutes into the game. 6,000 6, gold, gold Thank you very much. Uh, we are watching. An early game comp completely destroy a late game comp. And this really isn't something we've seen that commonly in the LCS this split. There's been a lot of late game, there's been a lot of stall. Maybe that Giants Rocket game with the Banner of Command. Uh -huh, the first one. But we've yet to see even a Banner of Command in this game. G2 are just dismantling H2K. I love the wonder, after he got ahead, just keeps leaving his lane because he knows he's not going to kill the Cho'Gath again. 1v1, just go mid. Kill whatever member of H2K is standing in that mid lane trying to defend. Keep getting more kills. Another mid lane turret fell down. Drake for G2, only the first one they can actually pick up. So the Drakes are not going to be the important ones for this team. Instead, we're looking at another potential tower dive at a tier 2 turret. Because they can push multiple lanes at once. We could look at a super early Baron as well. Before the game, we highlighted Yankos and Perks. But it's been more of the Yankos and Wonder show. But Perks has tried to keep up. Yeah, Perks has done a good job of roaming and helping out when he can. But it's been all about how Yankos and Wonder synergize. And Wonder has commonly topped MVP lists across the course of the split. Four top laners, the best top laner we have statistically in the league. He's definitely staking his claim for that MVP spot. Yeah, and after this week, we are voting, of course, yep. for MVP and all pro team. Uh, I believe the announcement came out today. It did. Uh, from 
Seeing it also pop up on Reddit and a lot of good discussions about who are, you know, on the all pro teams or the MVP ones. I think most people, I would put Wonder in that all pro top laner. At least have him as a top two. Flash impale. They're looking for a kill. The Emperor's Divide will not perks back, but he flashes to the side and we did is here for the sustain for perks. Shook's gonna get chased in by Yankos. Pops the ultimate as well, but he's just gonna Ragnarok his way away from the fight. In the end, Perk stayed alive. That was the first flash ult from Shook. It's been so long, so late in yeah, the game. I mean, none of, his, none of his lanes were really gang, like winnable or gangable. He was like, yeah, you know what, guys, I'm here. I'm trying to help you, but we can't really do anything because we don't know where Yankus is and he can just kill us. So that was, again, kind of the issue with the HK draft of how they couldn't fight in any lane. And G2 could fight in every lane, it felt like, with, with their setup, and especially with the all of jungle, who I think some European teams, they're still sleeping on all of jungle. Like, it is such a power pick. Great items for him. Uh, Predator is amazing. Fantastic dueling power. It's, I think it's, is it my favorite jungle pick right now? I'm probably gonna put it up there at least like S tier on yeah. par with what we see at least with Sijuani. Uh, and Skarner at the moment. Only getting buffed on 8.5 as well. I mean, so why not? Make him why even not? stronger. Let's have a quick look at deep minion dematerializers. There are five sacks remaining on Promise Q, so he can clear out that first Baron push if G2 were to take it. Interestingly, Perks has gone for a Morello Nomicon here, Deficio, after getting that Luden's Echo. Not an item we too commonly see these days. I mean, he did obviously want the extra magic penetration before he fully completed the item. Uh, you don't have to actually fully upgrade it, but in terms of getting the healing reduction, look on the side of H2K, there is some on the Cho'Gath, but I don't feel like he necessarily needs to shut down too much healing. I think it also might just be a case of him just having a ton of extra gold. Yeah, so like, oh, guys, back. I can't even hold like, all of this gold. I already have the Oblivion Orb. Like, Might as well complete it. Let me just fully complete it because I am, again, pretty far ahead. We have game. seen that uh, cost people in the past. I remember a certain Tamic player completing a mana move that and their team then losing. That was definitely not the reason they lost, but... Um, G2 needs just to continue to go for turrets. That's what they do. Like, the bot lane, no one's gonna stop them. They can swap it to top side. They can start playing around Baron as well after this. They might even kill Smitty J. He's gonna flash away. Ragnarok does come out from Yankos, but doesn't want to tank up the tower for too much longer. Ah, poor Smitty J. Whenever that flash is ready and you feel safe for a moment, it's gone. Uh, oh, no. Six Always and gone. a half thousand gold lead for G2 coming out with the 20-minute mark. Now, you talked about dematerialized on Promise Q. It is probably one of the last hopes for H2K when it comes to stalling. One of the answers is uh, get two banners. Buff up either in two different lanes, yeah. you can only use it on one, or just buff up two minions right next to each other and then protect at least one of them from this dematerializer and then you will get that inhib down. The other issue for H2K is they can't really stand outside the base, which is something Misfits did in the past, sort of held that cannon minion outside of the uh, turret range to keep yeah. it away from taking the it's towers. a lot of engage on the yeah. side of G2. Uh, multiple skill shots in terms of Varus, Syndra, and Braum to start a fight. And then, of course, there's a Maokai who says, aha, uh -huh, giant cats covering the entire lane and W. So it's pretty impossible for G2 to not get a fight yes. if they want one. Let's have a look down the itemization as we come just past that 20 minute mark. CS is actually relatively even, which isn't always the case. Slight CS leads for H2K, but Adaptive Helm Banner complete on Wonder. We talked about that Banner of Command strength. Lots of magic resist across the board here for G2, including a wit's end on Hyun, and Smitty J is going to get chased oh, down here in the top lane. That is a very fast Olaf, and there's really nowhere for Smitty J to go at this point. The Banner of Command minion just comes in to help out. G2 get their ninth kill it's of fine, the game. It's fine. Smitty J is making sure to highlight in all chat that he's winning on CS. So he's effectively winning lane. Yeah. That's how it works. Uh, Yankos, he doesn't care. He just wants to keep killing this stupid Cho'Gath. And right now they get bot lane turret. They got a banner minion already. Someone has to go back down to defend. It is currently Selfie who can't really kill the banner command minion very easily. Because yeah, as you guys can see, it's kind of like, ah, I deal magic damage with my soldiers. It's interesting that the spear deals magic damage. You think a spear would deal physical damage? Yeah, but it's a magic spear from a magic soldier. Yeah, but it's still a physical spear. Is it? Like, I could tell you a spear was magic and stab you with it, and it would probably still do physical damage to you. In the real world? Yes. Are Are we saying League isn't in the real world? I, I thought this was a documentary, Deficio. It's actually being played right outside. Ah. <laughs> 
G2, is that your Baron Vision control here? Basically no vision for H2K at the moment. Oh, the, ah, they got the sneaky ward outside Baron. Ah, yes. The, the classic ward. The ward that Vedius hates. Guys, you always got to sweep outside to spot it. It is a little bit far away, so if G2 do approach the Baron from the other side, they'll probably sneak in without the ward or spotting they blast him. Cone in as blast well. Blast over also will get them in there unnoticed. Rest of H2K, so they're like, ah, no tracker's knife, we're lacking wards here, we're only relying on this trinket ward from Shook on the top side. That, of course, goes on cooldown, so it's not too effective for them to actually keep the vision. Double blue trinket to try and see if they can spot when the Baron is being started, but again, if you're G2, you're not in a hurry to kill Baron just yet. You can keep just putting pressure, kill all the jungle camps. If you want to start Baron, great, do it. If they don't contest it, you finish it. If they do, you turn and fight them, and you're like 10,000 gold ahead, so you just win the fight. Well, it's only 7,000 gold. Fine. Show, What's yes, the difference? Seven like 10,000 10, gold. Uh, G2's just trying to set up a, a Baron bait, but they're not really going to be able to get too much out of it yet. Looks like they're going to blast Cone in nope. with that. Huh? Not yet. Fast Side Automation did come down, so that's one of the news. So remember, the entire HRK draft was built around the fact that they believe G2 are not able to finish this game in time. Well, we're 25 minutes in. G2 look like they can finish, but they haven't finished yet. That's the thing. Because we're still talking. Look like they can finish, yep. but it's not over. It's true. And now H2K used a little timing of G2 going back to base to restock control wards to sneak their way in, try and kill the Rift Scouter. That's a big bonus because that buys you a lot of extra time of vision. Wait, they actually... No, no, what? no. Wait, they're what? starting it. They're doing the Baron? That's really H2K, risky. this is the call because here comes to the TP behind them as well. And they're not going to be able to solidify it. Selfie, you can't stop him with soldiers. Selfie gets chased down. G2 get a kill. But and H2K pay for their call. Why? Why, why? why did you think they could just rush it down? Kill the Rift Scotler, buy a minute or two for yourself, and just back away. Smitty J was rooted up here. Still does not have the flash. He's going to get chased down by G2. Hyanen coming in from the backside. The Feast does nothing. G2 get two kills and H2K do just have to back away from this fight. So while H2K said, G2, you cannot finish the game, G2 said, H2K, you cannot defend properly, so we can draft early against you, and we will win that way. H2K just showed us, right here, a very greedy call to try and sneak that Baron, instead of grabbing the Rift Scotler and just stepping away and trying to stall. Their AD carry was actually farming pretty well. Two fully uh, completed items on Sherith, still sitting on a thousand gold, like, he was doing his job. And we talked about that. Sheriff can't carry them to the late game, so he's relying on the team not falling too far behind while he's scaling. This is how you fall further behind for no reason. That play is never going to happen. No, work. it's never going to work. And uh, HUK may be a bit of desperation. This is an interesting interaction. You cannot stop Olaf running through the wall with those soldiers. They just part like the Red Sea in front of him. And you can see Smitty J hasn't had the best of games, has been heavily camped. I'm pretty sure he was saying, wait, why did we just do that? Oh, they're going to try and chase on Tianan, but Flash, Chain of Corruption away. Well, did on his way up as well, but Sheriff is just around the corner. Yanko's pushing in, Promise Q's going to eat him up. The Predator chase is on, and the Ragnarok coming out, but here's the TP. H2K trying to turn this one back around. Cannot slow down the Olaf enough, and that's a TP burnt for H2K. Selfie tried to catch out, Perks has to cleanse. Perks doesn't have the ultimate yet, but it's on its way. Promise Q eats up his mid laner, tries to get the Emperor to safety, the bodyguard. Oh, the cats. Catfish. Here come the cats, and it catches out too. Promise Q with the cleanse. Shook suppresses Perks. They can't quite take him down. Eventually, they get the shutdown, and look at Sheriff. He's still alive on the back line. Sheriff is doing absolute work. He's gutting down some outlaws. There's two. They're looking for more H2K. And turn this one around to Vigio. Really? I can't believe it! That's the exact same thing that happened when they <laughs> played against Fnatic and they did this thing when they drafted a full late game and fell super far behind. And for some reason, if you are a top two team in Europe against H2K, you have to chase, chase, chase instead of just playing for Baron. Here we go. Yankos. Yankos. Flash. Oh, there's Smite. no jungler. There's no Flash. jungler. Smite. Smitty J doesn't have beats. Yankos yes. and Wudit know they can do this. H2K have to pull off it. Yankos is off towards the side. Righteous Glory propped. Oh, that's HP. Splendor. Flash. Smite. He can sense it. He can taste it. He has to wait for the feast. He's seen everyone else get it. They have to oh, run it. Oh, nice. And nice. They get nice. the Baron. Great play from Selfie. Oh, I don't think Yankos expected that one. He's almost ready and everything, but he didn't use it. This is the story of Smitty, though. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm in the pit. Does have the feast back up. Oh, now he's strong. Promise Q can eat him. There we go. He's out. 
Smitty J knew all along that he won that top lane. Calculated! Man, okay, top two team in Europe against H2K. This will happen for some reason. Let's, let's, okay, let's watch it again. I hate you for laughing right now, Medic. I know you're muted, but he's laughing a lot uh, because of this play. So, they jump in with G2. They're calling, let's go for the kills here. Perks is on his way. Wonder is walking from mid as well. So, right now, just kind of chasing the force. TP in the back way. Everything's great. Just stop here. You'll find G2. You can just go back to play around Baron. Perks flashes out. And now the call is, let's fight them. So, I like the cats from Wonder. But Perks lost his flash. We have to remember that. And Shook's flash is ready. So he's the one making the call. Oh, look at Perks in the front. Let's go for him. They kill him instantly. Jan and Valley gets in range until now. And Sheriff is untouched. Great call from H2K. We're getting towards the late game. And I can't believe that we just watched the exact same kind of play as Fnatic pulled off earlier in the split. G2 cannot finish games, Deficio. They did it against Fnatic. Now we see a 6,000 gold lead crumble to only 4,000. H2K know how to play against these top teams. I mean, they do, I guess. In to win. Hey, I guess we said it that H2K were like, they can't finish. Yep. Veteran knows best. Let's bring it back though to Fisher because we are 30 minutes in. There's a 3,000 gold lead for G2. Baron's still on H2K, but they do not have a banner of command anywhere. So we're not going to see oh, any. Wow. Thomas the Tonk Engines in this game. Is that the name now? What happened to Bob? So there's Bob, there's the Cannon Minion Boy, or the, can the, the Bannoned, Bannoned Cannon Boy, there's Thomas the Tank, Thomas the Tonk, and there's probably a few other ones circulating around there. I saw a really good one on Twitter that I can't remember now, and I was going to claim it for my own. So it's probably Karma that I can't remember. It. Ah, yeah, there we go. Uh, H2K. Right now, they don't care about banners because they're not looking to push anything. They're just looking to keep scaling into the late game. They're okay just getting the Baron, stopping T2 from snowballing. So far, everything has been successful if we just look at the last two minutes. What did G2 do in this situation, though? Because you've lost that lead that you so carefully cultivated for yourself. We are entering the early late game, 30 minutes in, and they haven't been able to finish the game, which is what we thought they needed to do to win this game. Now, Syndra is still very strong. Five kills on Perk's side. Gold-wise, a thousand. Okay, so he's not looking to get four items instantly and get ahead of Selfie in that way, but he's level 16. Ranked three ulties there. Does deal a lot more damage in teamfights than a lot of people expect from a Syndra. It's not just about ulting one target, because Time Kench will deny that. So it's not like G2 can't win the following fight. It's just, it's just getting harder and harder and harder. And that's always the thing. When you play against these comps that just outscale you, is the last few fights of the game just feels almost impossible for you to win unless you have a sick, sick outplay. Perks lands a great stun maybe on someone and Promise Q is not nearby to devour them, but that's not too uh, consistent for G2. I like the cleanse on Promise Q in case he gets stunned up. Let's see what G2 can do now. Feels like they have to win the next fight. Wonder's going to engage onto the Dinosaur Smitty J in that front line. Eats up Hyun and Sheriff still alive. We have to watch that AD carry through these fights. He is the integral part of H2K's team composition. And you can see Smitty J still not in the best of positions. Good power play there from H2K though with that Baron. And we have to remember if Yankos and Wonder decides to like dive onto Sheriff, there's going to be Flash on his side plus Promise is next to him to devour him. So that strategy probably won't work for G2. The objective then comes to kill the first guy in the front line. And again, they promise you can try and play spoiler by just standing at least close enough to Smitty J, who's going to tank up all the damage. So it is tough for T2 because they can't really just dive Sheriff due to Time Kench. And they do struggle a bit to kill the front line, also a bit due to the Time Kench, depending on, of course, if Devourer is ready or not. I think, though, with Devourer's late game on hit build, which is fine against tanks, if they get enough time, they can kill Smitty J and just kind of make sure that Wanda doesn't die in their front line. But it gets harder and harder, and Sheriff, he's going to melt a tank. Yeah. Like, that's kind of the whole goal of why they picked this bottom lane on H2K side. Percent max HP damage definitely helps. Have to remember how important this game is for G2 and for H2K. Yeah, yeah. G2, if they win, would secure that locked spot in playoffs. Should still be able to make it. 
H2K, though, really need this win to keep their playoff hopes alive. They tie with Schalke, with Giants, with Unicorns of Love at six and nine. And that's only one win away, really, from getting into playoffs. Oh, it's going to move up once oh, again. Out towards the top side, the Feast onto Pucks. Can't quite take him down, but the Predators chasing in. Down towards the bottom side, the Impale on Wadid. H2K, get one kill, and they're looking for a bit more. It's happening, baby. It's happening. Oh, H2K, late game comp. They're going for more kills. Now, Perks is up towards the top side of this. Can he yeah, get on? He's so it? low. Selfie, Selfie just chases killer. him. Yeah, he's dead. Almost kills Selfie, though. Yeah, but almost. A for effort. H2K get two more kills for themselves. It's insane. If we go 10 minutes back in this game, it was like, oh, I mean, G2, full control, stomping them game over. I was thinking it was going to be a perfect game 10 minutes ago. Like they hadn't then died, no towers had gone down, there was only the, there was the Mountain Drake, which I know we count technically, but I always forget about, and then say perfect game, and hey. my color caster goes, oh, but they got a Mountain Drake. You make up your own rules. Yeah. Not They're not the correct them. rules, but I make them I, up. This is how it H2K is. pushing down mid though here, Deficio. They've closed that gold gap, it's only a thousand, it's gonna be less than that as this tower falls, and G2 just don't seem to have a way to answer H2K. It's so hard for them to win the fights. We talked about it before. They don't win the race when it comes to killing the front line first because they're against Sheriff and Selfion, two late game carries plus a Tam Kenj. Then they can't really dive the enemy back line because again, there is a Tam Kenj right next to them. You also have to remember that Smitty J, if you actually try and run past him, silence, knock up Feast, we just saw it against Perks, pretty much kills anyone. Really interesting itemization here from Perks. He's gone ah. for Spellbinder as his fourth item. Now, a lot of people might not know what Spellbinder does. It's a new item that was introduced on 8.4. It stacks up to 100 stacks when you use spells, when your enemies use spells, and when your allies use spells. Each stack is worth 1 AP or 0.3% movement speed, and you can activate it at any time. So you could either get 100 AP and 30% movement speed, or, or almost nothing. Or nothing. Or you could activate it at 50 stacks or 25 stacks for less bonuses. But it is a one-off, I want to burst some fools item. Yes, because also it gives 100 AP just flat from the item yes. itself, which of course is extremely high. I also want to see if the movement speed is going to be important for him, because if it's going to be a lot around dancing around fights, buy a lot of time while they're trying to burden down a tank, that could be valuable for me if he activates it at the proper time. Only compounds with the Cloud Drake they have as well. People say Cloud Drakes aren't worth it. They definitely are. <laughs> Let's see in the next fight here for D2 Esports. H2K, they've taken control of this game. They're starting at Baron. Only red sides have got Barons thus far today, Deficio. So we'll have to see if that oh, holds they're true. Feast it now. Looking for the Feast, Perks off towards the side. There's the Feast, H2K get it, but the fight is going to continue through. Yankos so low, just about gets away. Look today, says Sheriff as he secures the kill with a red buff proc. And now Perks needs to run away. He's already used the Spellbinder, he's going to get chased down. H2K can just look to close this one out now. They don't need this chase. They don't need to get these fights. There is an Elder Drake on the cards, though. But Medic, right now, if you're HK, you can do whatever you want. This is your game. This is your map. You have to better comp. You got to late game. You just picked up a second Baron for yourself. You killed the enemy genre. Elder Drake being started perks around. Spellbinder on 60 stacks, but on cooldown. Not ready for him at the moment. Oh, Wonder didn't even get in there. Not sure he wanted to. Doesn't get into the pit, and I think this Elder Drake is going to be given up. Perks looking for the steal across the wall. That was closer than expected, but H2K do secure it. And with it, a 3,000 gold lead at the 36 minute mark of this game. Who needs Banner of Command, not H2K? I just have to bet a teamfight comp and win every teamfight in the late game, I guess. Well, yeah, but you also have to get to the late game, which yeah. was impressive from them. Listen. They sacrificed Smitty J. Veteran, he's done this twice now. So we can no longer call it a cheesy strategy or not viable. If it's worked twice against Fnatic and G2 Esports in Europe, surely, surely then. I just it wish is I a knew good how it works. It works with the fact that they're saying we know the enemy team, even if they get one Baron, we actually think we can stall past that Baron with dematerializers, if they're still on Promise Queue. And then we get to three items, and they won't have finished the game by then. And then we trust in our carries, Selfie and Sheriff, to win the fights. Now, falling that far behind, typically shouldn't allow you to win the game. But then if the enemy team ends up over chasing and you make a good call from Shook, Flash will go on to Perks. Hey man, it works. Credit to H2K. Capitalize on your opponent's mistakes. That's what G2 did against Giants last week. That's what H2K are doing right back to G2 today. 
Inhibitor Tower falls low, it falls down as well. H2K breaking the base of the G2. As we get towards the 38 minute mark of this game, that inhibitor is going to fall, and G2 very much on the back foot. This is where we need someone like Perks to step up. This is where they need their carries to really have an influence in this game because at the moment, the carry for H2K, Sheriff, is doing exactly what he needs to in team fights. Get to back away after killing mid in hip. G2 can only dream of killing an in-hip against H2K. I will also highlight, Medic, that uh, with our cast of prediction... Oh, I knew this was coming! Uh, they get tweeted out, of course, before the show. You guys can check it out on Lolly Sports uh, on the Twitter. Two people predicted H2K to win this game. Uh, Amazing did, and I forgot the name of the other one. Yeah, so did I. He's a freelancer. It doesn't really matter that oh, much anymore. It so. was me! And H2K! are currently winning. See, I didn't bring this up when H2K were getting demolished earlier on. So let's have a little bit of decorum here, Deficio, because H2K are looking for their second inhibitor. The engage comes out, Chain of Corruption, but it's only onto Smitty J, and they just can't tread through that tank in the front line quickly enough. Halo Barrows really doesn't pierce the back of a dinosaur at all. Tough as leather. And they're just waiting for the next minion wave. Yeah, leather. That was the one I would have picked as well, H2K. Get the second in here in just a moment. Smitty J. Oh, they're going for Perks. Sheriff got caught on the back line, but Perks has been caught up with Did Eaton. There, the kill's just raining through for H2K. They are not giving an inch to G2. Ends up being a one for two. Perks did not go for QSS in this game, so Shook can flash onto him, and then Smitty J with the silence can follow, and they will kill that mid laner. They're looking to finish the game, even pre-40 minutes! This turnaround is absolutely disgusting. Sheriff's tanking up the tower. He doesn't care. He wants Wonder. Won't be able to secure the kill in the end, but the Nexus Towers are going to fall. And H2K look to close this one out. Sheriff's still alive in the back line. That's the second Nexus Tower. And against all odds, H2K take down G2 and keep their playoff hopes alive. This is a team that was sitting at the bottom of the standings. Only won one game, lost eight games. And of course, everyone thought they were gone, they were out. But they just keep finding their way back. They're tying with multiple teams down the bottom now. One of these teams will get the number six spot, will get that playoff spot. At this point, after H2K just took down G2, I think among those teams, they might be one of the favorites to clinch this playoff spot based on the remaining schedule. Because they get to decide as well against teams like Rocket. Just remember, they've got Splice, Shalka, and Rocket left. Like, those are beatable opponents, especially after they've taken down yeah, G2 yeah. today. I mean, Splice is then the toughest one there. Shalka and Rocket, of course, if you want to make playoffs, you got to be able to beat those teams. So that's next for H2K. I. Just to recap this game, what was so interesting, again, and we said it a few times, like, HK entered this draft, literally just saying, G2 Esports, you can't snowball the game, or you can't close the game. And G2 said, haha, HK, you can't defend. So they, they met with complete opposite comps against each other. And in the end, H2K saying that G2 will mess up, they won't be able to finish the game in time, it was correct. It's the biggest comeback we've seen at the 20 minute mark from any team this split. Incredible performance from H2K. As always, we want to know who you think is player of the game. Head on over to Atlol Esports on Twitter. It's veteran. Where you can choose between Sheriff, Selfie, and Smitty J. I mean, we bigged up Sheriff before the game started. Dude, I would love a Smitty, I think Smitty J guy. Smitty J deserves it, man. <laughs> Zero like, five. In his head, he's like FF15, FF15, FF15. No, he was he winning on CS. He continues. He was winning on He CS. continues to have a positive mental attitude. He continues to get CS, to get items. And in the late game, he, he just he really did a lot of work in those fights. European Cho'Gath, mm, I love it. Like I feel like every single fight that Cho'Gath is just fantastic. Smitty J is just following in so has his footsteps, you know. There you go. You're supposed to go down zero five in lane yeah. in order to be able to be big in team fights. The only way it works. Also, Shook decided to save his flash ult for later in the game, but then when he did show them, they were pretty spot on. On perks twice. Big fights, one in favor of H2K. The first one that actually bounced him back in the game. And we'll find out more about how Shook made those plays in an interview that's coming up in just a couple of Ooh. minutes' time. He's setting up over there with Pyrotechnics. I was allowed to tease that, but we're not quite ready to go over there yet. Well, what is this swap players now? That's true. That then would be I, then I, would have be, I would have messed up. Yeah, I've messed good. up many times in my career. I could take one more, I think, thus far. Deficio, Deficio, Deficio. 
Fnatic Medic, Medic, versus Medic. Rocket is next, right? If Rocket lose that, guess how many teams are tied for sixth place? Five. Five way tie, baby. I love it in EU. To hear more about H2K's win, let's send it over to Pyra and their jungler. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I'm joined by Shook. And I don't think I've seen a comeback like that in a long time. We've had some crazy results here in the LCS this split. Shook, how did you guys pull that off? I think our late game combos is better than theirs. I had Syndra didn't have a quick silver sash against Karna, so I got to catch her out a couple of times in team fights. We got some, we got tempo back in the game from that, like we delayed them winning the game. I still think they could have won the game cleanly. They were so far ahead, I just made, they made so many mistakes that we, we could go come back in the game. Yeah, now to rewind it a little bit earlier on, it seemed like Yankos kind of had your number and was really focused on diving a lot in the top side. How did you keep your team calm to like really just start turning those fights around? I mean, we knew like we had to sacrifice early because they're comp, like they straight up win everywhere early game. Like we just have to make sacrifices in the early game and just win later on. Unfortunately, they got to snowball really hard. They played it really well. And uh, yeah, we just had to deal with it and stay calm and hope for the best. All right, well, you, you certainly managed to do that. Now, tell me what was going through your mind when you actually did manage to take that fight up top and we saw Smitty J starting to pop off and you were just taking out G2 member after G2 member. I mean, we were all winning. Yeah, we just stall, don't give them Nasher, just wait till late game comes and we'll win. So basically, we're just all just making sure they don't get Nasher. We give up towers, we give up kills, it's whatever. As long as they don't have Nasher, like, we still win the game, so. Well, Coolio, now, it is a tough climb still for you guys to make playoffs, but since you've been on the team and Selfie as well, things have been definitely looking up. How confident do you feel that you can knock out the next couple of wins and make, uh, make it all the way into the playoffs? I mean, we're not too happy about this game, of course. Like, we could have played a lot better early, but uh, I still think we have a good shot against the other teams we're playing. Like, we're not playing all the top teams right now. We're playing more like the lower bottom of the table teams. So I can see us going to playoffs. Well, anything is still possible. And thank you for joining me, Show. Congratulations on the win. All right, now we are going to go ahead and take a quick break, but don't you go anywhere. When we return, it is Fnatic versus Rocket in three and a half. Don't go anywhere.